Welcome back to the Life of Love Vlogs. Today we're going to be talking all things women in sports and I figured what better person to bring along than my best friend Natalie. She's in the same kind of industry I am. She covers uh, men's hockey and football here. I cover men's soccer so we figured we'd give you a bit of a rundown on what we do and what we like. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie Nori and I am a very good friend of Lauren's. We have been friends since about freshman year we met each other in a sport industry class here at UNH um, and honestly around that time is when we both started getting into this line of work I knew coming into school that I really I loved talking about sports and I just wanted to do something with it I'm like I love hockey I just want to talk about hockey so I talked to um, a really good mentor that we both have here Mike Murphy shout out Mike um, and he turned me on to post-game reporting and editing and stuff like that. So I started when I was about 18 years old and I did my first post-game report for a UNH hockey game. And growing up, my dream was to work rinkside UNH hockey. So two years later, the New England Sports Network uh, signed a deal with uh, the University of New Hampshire. And my first time on live television, I was 19 years old. Um, and I was rinkside for I think it was probably a UVM game or Yale or something like that. But um, yeah, the rest is history. We're just wrapping up our senior year here and gonna figure out the next step as we go. My story is a little different, I guess. I grew up wanting to do, like, go to school for art, which is completely different than what I do now. But then I like realized as I was finishing up high school that sports is the way I wanted to go. I kind of similar to her. I love talking about sports. I love playing sports. Like everything about sports, I wanted it. So I decided to get into sports reporting and it wasn't until the spring of my freshman year that I got like a tryout kind of thing I guess you'd say and I did a couple of the like women's lacrosse games and then I started doing like the men's soccer games because they had like a little spring season that they do kind of as like a friendly game to just keep practicing and get them ready for the fall, the next fall season so got my foot in the water there a little bit and then by the fall of my sophomore year I officially started with the men's team and they won their first championship for the division in 2018, which was super exciting. It was awesome to be able to have that as my first season covering them. And I haven't looked back since, and they've been a great group of guys. They won the championship again last year. Obviously, there's no sports going on this fall, which is kind of unfortunate, but they're definitely gearing up for the spring. I just got to see them like last Friday, I think it was Friday or two ago, and they're looking pretty good out there. They're all excited to be back together. So it'll be interesting, but we're all ready to get back at it in the spring. So the topic here is women in sports. And I guess you can't exactly see where we are, but we are in the production room here at our office. Um, and behind us is a monitor Got of some basketball clips going. Cool things. And yeah, we have a, I don't know, what do you call it? A cycle of uh, basketball things going on behind yeah. us. But um, so yeah, this is kind of our environment right now. Um, I think, you know, our co-workers are the coolest guys. Um, they really have taught us so much. Um, I know coming in personally, I didn't know anything about production. I didn't know what an SD card was. And now all of a sudden I know how to edit and produce my own pieces and write my own scripts. Um, and that was a challenging thing to learn. So. For me, I mean, I came in blind, and three and a half years later, here we are. Um, I don't know what your experience was like learning how to, to do all of those things was. Yeah, I was really nervous. I was like, oh, this sounds like a fun thing to do, because I found out about this job at the um, career and internship fair that they had, like at the very beginning of fall semester of my freshman year, and I was like, oh, this would be perfect. I'm like, I could basically get paid to watch sports. Who wouldn't want to do that? And so I was like, oh yeah, like see what this is all about. And I was like, oh my god, what am I getting myself into? They're like, oh yeah, you're gonna be recording the games. You gotta plug in the camera, like get it all set up, get yourself ready to go. And I'm like, I don't know how to do any of this. And then just like, oh, we'll teach you all of it. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm like, that makes me feel a lot better because I'm like, nobody else seems to know what they're doing either, which is good. And they really like got on us about teaching us like how to do things, and then like when it came to finally doing the reporting side, and when we had to record ourselves, they 
told us the basics, but then it was, oh, kind of just like figure it out for yourself, which at first was terrifying. I was like, how am I gonna be able to do this by myself? But then it kind of turned into, okay, like it's kind of a good push to be like, all right, I need to learn how to do this by myself because this will help me later, because this will look much better on like resumes and like when you're applying for jobs later so that you can be like, oh, I can be totally self-sufficient. Just give me a camera and the equipment. I'll be good to go. I can record myself. I can put all this stuff together. We're doing it right now on this channel, putting this YouTube video together. We clearly know how to put things together. So it's definitely, helped to be able to like know how to do things by ourselves as terrifying as it was the first go around. Yeah, I think uh, you say the word teaching there and I almost want to say that that was a very loose term <laughs> coming oh, in yeah, here. for sure. Because like I said, our coworkers are amazing and they've taught us so much, but I think we learned the most just by doing it mm -hmm. ourselves and oh, yeah. messing up so many times and like that, that, you know, I've talked to so many people about this line of work and they say it's repetition. It's all about repetition. You just go in, you give it your best shot. If it doesn't work out, you learn from your mistakes. And that's exactly how we have learned. But along the way, we've been able to develop a really nice support system and being like the same age and the same classes, same major and doing this together has been a huge help for me going through it with Lauren. Um, and yeah, from there, I think being self-sufficient is a huge thing to make yourself way more, um, our boss always uses the term employable when you're applying for jobs. Um, show what you got and then show them that you can do it. And if you don't know how to do it, you're willing to learn. Um, so that's kind of the mentality that we've been able to develop through this um, and a lot of resilience too through it. So that that's taught us to grow some thick skin, you know, oh, yeah. whether you're a woman in sports or not. Right now we're kind of like still the students and interns, um, but we're working our way up and we're doing the best we can. Yeah, I definitely would not have survived the many late nights of editing stress and wanting to just completely throw my computer out the window because stuff isn't working. The amount of times we have called each other like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. Like having a breakdown at like 10 o'clock at night because oh my god this video didn't work or oh my gosh the audio was terrible or this looked really bad and I don't know what to do or this isn't working. If I didn't have her over here I would probably not still be here. I'd be too stressed out about <laughs> everything but thankfully I do have her because oh, I would be a hot mess. Yeah I know the, the nights that I spent in this building in this office post game in a snowstorm carrying like 50 pounds of equipment across the street in high heels and then coming here and having to edit things till 1 a.m. and crying on the phone to whoever would listen to me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a, a long process, <laughs> but we've okay. made it. <laughs> kind of. I didn't think I'd ever say I'd miss having turf pellets in my shoes from all the soccer games, but I definitely yeah. do because it's just one of those like funny things you get used to and I'd like go home to get ready to edit and I would just immediately have to take my shoes off, dump them out over the trash can and there's just pellets everywhere. I would find them in my bed even if I'm done. <laughs> and like, I just, it's one of those stupid little things you find annoying at the time but then when there's no sports going on right now you're like, damn, I really do miss like miss stupid things like that. I, I literally find SD cards in my bed because <laughs> like, I'll put them in pockets and whatever and I wake up in the morning and I'm like, what the heck is on my back? And I pull it out and I'm like, that's how you know you're in production. Oh yeah, you just, just find <laughs> equipment everywhere. Literally, it's mess. so random, but it's funny, yeah. <laughs> Our first live broadcast. Definitely, they were not easy. They like, it, it was super exciting, I will say. I had, my parents were texting me that they were watching it because I had sent them the link to the stream and told them how to do it. And they, I think, were at my grandparents at the time, so they were watching it with them. And I had a couple of friends actually like in the crowd watching it for a little bit, which was nice to know. And I know she was there for a little bit of it, which was super helpful because I know she's obviously, she started a little, she's uh, started before I did. So she had more experience and she was able to kind of calm me down because I was a hot mess. I was freaking out the whole time. I, I felt ready, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, am I really ready? And it was freezing that night, so I couldn't really feel anything. And I'm standing there on the side of the field and everyone's just kind of giving me funny looks. Like, what is this girl like walking around with a microphone? But it was a lot of fun, as scary as it was, it was a lot of fun, and it was definitely interesting to get, like, really get into it, and I had to, like, I had some notes on my phone, so I was, like, glancing up, and I was like, oh, I have some talking points, because I can hear our play-by-play -play and color commentators in my ear, and they were talking about some of the players, or, like, talking about what was going on, I was like, oh, I have something I can say about them, so they'd throw it down to me, and I would 
say my little fact about whoever they were just talking about or whatever, like part of the game they were talking about and get myself in that way. And then it wasn't until my second game that really I got kind of freaked out, but it was, it ended up going into overtime, which I hadn't really experienced with live broadcast yet. So that was a little nerve wracking. And my boss goes, oh, we have like five minutes until the next overtime starts. So you're going to have to fill with talking about what just happened in the game. And immediately, as soon as he said that, I was like, I have, well, I don't even remember what just happened. I'm like, I've been staying here the whole time, but as soon as you told me, oh yeah, just talk about what happened. I don't remember what happened anymore. But then I just kind of had to like take a breath and just collect myself and be like, all right, I do know what happened. I had to like really focus in and be like, all right, this is what happened. And then this is what they need to keep doing to get that win in the overtime so that we don't have to go into another overtime and really secure that win. But it was definitely nerve wracking when you hear, oh yeah, just talk about what happened. And then you're like, wait, I don't know what happened anymore, but you gotta work through it, and it was it ended up being a lot of fun, and that was definitely one of my favorite games by far. Yeah, I think um, I think I got it. My first live broadcast was against Dartmouth, um, another New Hampshire school um, in the ECAC, um, and this was my first game on Nesson. It was it was actually ESPN, and it was December eighth because my mom got a puck and put hockey tape around the edge, you know, and they do like, oh, first NHL goal. It was Natalie's first hockey game on TV. <laughs> so cute. Um, and it's still hanging up in my room. Thank you, mom. <laughs> uh, but, you know, she said the eye of B in the ear, and I think that was the hardest thing for me to get used to because yeah. if you have to talk and think while someone else is giving you direction, um, it caused me to stutter like a lot and Really I, hard to focus. It really is hard to focus. So I started like turning my producer down before I'd go on, and then he'd yell at me to turn him back up. But that's besides the point. My first <laughs> broadcast was uh, was really nerve wracking. I mean, you get so anxious. Like my game prep Wednesdays, we have media press conference. Thursdays, we have a phone conference with the opposing team, and then Friday is usually game day. So in those three days, um, you really get your head in the game, literally. And um, I didn't know how to take notes. I didn't know how to write proper bullet points. I didn't know where I was going to be half the time. Little did I know that I was going to have to interview the away team and then walk across the ice in high heels to go interview the home team. And the amount of times that I almost fell was ridiculous. I, I need ice skates next time. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, you gotta start somewhere and you know, I think my biggest mess up, I didn't even really mess up, it was just like, I said something that I didn't really mean to say, and then like you said, you're like, whoops, my brain just went away for a second, what do I say? Um, <laughs> it was really awkward actually. I was a UMass Amherst game, and one of their players, John Leonard, uh, was seen as like a poster child for the program, and um, I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm like, oh yes, and coach said, John Leonard is one of the poster children, and then I stopped. And I'm like, poster children? What? What does that even mean? And then all of a sudden I hear, you're alive, Natalie, in my ear. And I'm like, oh no, I'm like, okay, get it back together, get it back together. And I'm just like, uh, I think a few words came out and then I just went back to you, Mike. Like, just get me out of this situation. And I think uh, through those awkward forgetting what you're trying to say situations, you just, you focus on the next one and if I were to give a piece of advice, live TV is not the easiest, but it's also not the hardest because if you mess up, it's done. Nobody's gonna remember in the next five minutes. Unless you become a YouTube blooper, which would also be funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> you could be on Sports Center's not top 10. <laughs> right. So you mess up, you become a blooper, or people forget, but you just focus on the next one and don't get in your head too much. We're both overthinkers. Oh, yeah. We get in our heads. Oh, yeah. um, and then another big tip of advice that I've learned is how to take notes. You know, you want your bullet points. You want a few keywords to remember. Um, and yeah. yeah, you just you, you focus on those topics and you just get used to talking to a camera. Yeah, that was I think one of the weirdest things too is getting used to hearing myself on the camera because it's like, yeah, I love Snapchat. I love taking pictures. I love taking videos of myself and of my friends. But like. 
when you're consistently in front of the camera and having to listen to yourself talk and like hear yourself say things, you're like, at first you're like, wow, I sound kind of dumb. But then once you really get into it and you feel more confident with what you're talking about, you definitely like can hear a difference in the way you're speaking and the way you like more confidently sound. And at first I was like, I sounded horrible and you could definitely tell I was nervous, but then like by the end of my first season, I was feeling so much better about it. I was feeling a little less like, I don't want to say robotic, maybe scripted, but like by the end of it, I was feeling a lot more like confident. I felt a little better about trying to just kind of ad lib a few things, but it definitely, it won't happen right away, which is totally fine. You just kind of have to grow as you go and just get better at it every day. Grow as you go for sure. And I mean, um, what you said about scripted at first, I tried to memorize what I wanted to say. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> um, and the more comfortable you get, the easier it is to ad lib. Yeah. Um, and something that like I've personally been working on lately is really listening to interview in interviewees and in interviews and asking really good follow up questions. Um, because if you show that you're listening and you're engaged in the conversation, you're a good reporter. You know. Exactly. That's definitely that's immediately one of the things I thought of when I when we were talking about ad libbing and. You can have a few questions prepared because like I've done that with like the soccer games because I'm like oh I can ask like about the, like rivalry between teams because we play like Dartmouth sometimes and that's like a big like interstate rivalry but then it's like I make sure to pay attention to what's going on during the game so that I can ask questions based on what happened and then I obviously make sure to pay attention to what they're saying and really listen to the things that they're saying in their answers so then I can be like oh well you just talked about how you were communicating a lot with this player like how do you think that helped you and like kind of build off of what they said and make it more interesting and more natural that way, not as like, oh, I'm here reading straight from my phone. So it sounds a lot better and more like conversational almost, which is what you want. Right. I think um, hockey's good because like I can have like my paper, excuse me, my paper <laughs> notes, um, and I can like look at my first few bullet points and say, okay, I know I want to hit on the first line because they're really dynamic or doing really well. So they'll come to me and I'll just talk and talk and talk. And then when they cut off of me, because hockey's so fast, the puck drops, um, the camera comes off me and I can refer to my notes. And that is something that I have really been able to embrace and work with um, because I know that I only really have to remember a certain section because I'm also really bad at numbers and stats. So our producer knows I'm bad with numbers. So he's like, cut before she gets to the stats. <laughs> so then I can refer to my notes. Um, yeah. And like that's a big thing just learning how to work with the cameras and your notes be familiar with your preparation style and do the best you can because I get really anxious before games um, I hate to admit it but like I get in my head like severely and then once the puck drops literally I'm, I'm in the game so I'm good to go it's just the anticipation leading up and you know working on ways to just calm yourself down and relax in the yeah. game. I would say definitely don't be worried about mispronouncing players names because like yeah sometimes you get a pronunciation guide or obviously at a certain point you'll like you know your home team's like pronunciations pretty well because obviously you'll be around them enough but when it comes to like the visiting team they can have some really wild names. I remember definitely for the <laughs> University of Vermont men's soccer team they have a lot of like guys from other countries which is really cool but their names are very hard to pronounce so it definitely made for an interesting time because I had to talk about both teams obviously so I was like wow I like obviously know my home team very well I can pronounce their names no problem but when it came to the UVM team I was like okay you have like a lot of letters in your name and I'm not sure totally how to pronounce it and it's just like you just kind of have to go with it and if you pronounce it wrong you pronounce it wrong just kind of do what you can and like I said, nobody's probably going to remember it in the next like five minutes because you'll just be talking about something else by then. So it's not that big of a deal if you get it wrong. As long as you don't just like completely like don't even get close to it, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think um, something that's intimidating is working with all dudes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> working with all guys. I mean, you are surrounded by soccer players and coaches and I'm surrounded by a bunch of stinky hockey players and walking through hallways. And I mean, yeah. it is a good thing that we're able to carry around like a really nice credential on our microphone because that is what makes us legitimate. Hi, I'm Natalie Nori and I'm with Nesson and I'm here to do an intermission report. Can mm -hmm. you talk to me? Um, and like, it's intimidating. I mean, you go up to these people, but I don't know. I feel like I need to assert dominance sometimes, bit, yeah. especially in the away team because I've been working with the home team for the past three years. 
uh, the away teams kind of scare me. So I just walk in there and um, I don't know, I got my heels on, I got my, my binder in one hand, my microphone in the other. Yeah. And I, um, I do my research in the hallway. I'm like, okay, who is the assistant coach on my phone? Okay, Ben Barr, I want him. Mm -hmm. So I go in and I'm like, excuse me, do you mind directing me to Ben Barr? You know, I'm so-and-so and I just need a few words uh, when he gets a chance, if, if it can be before five minutes before uh, the period starts or something, whatever, you know, just uh, here I am and this is what I'm doing. And they, they listen and they're like, all right, sure, whatever. Let's, let's get him for her. And <laughs> That's something that you kind of need to adjust to as well. Being a female is just, you can, I mean, you're there to do a job. You're there to have fun. So own it. And if someone tells you that you can't be somewhere or do something, you say, yeah, I can. Look at my credentials, buddy. <laughs> it has my name on it, so yeah. I can be here. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I think for the home team, definitely, like, when I go to interview team, I think it's more of trying not to, like, smile or laugh too much to make it seem like a little too comfortable because obviously I do know them well enough so it's like we can joke around with each other but then it's like I have to try to keep it professional whereas with the away team I have to try to like be comfortable with them because obviously I don't know them as well as my home team so I have to like try to look a little more calm and not like nervous so it's like kind of an interesting dynamic to see between the two but you definitely learn it after a little while but it takes a little bit to pick up for sure. So obviously um, there's a pandemic going on and we have so many questions as well as everyone else about the status of our sports this year. We're not exactly sure what to expect. I think if anything really abbreviated seasons, um, in conference, not much traveling. Um, but I mean if we can watch a sport and talk about a sport we're okay with it. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> whatever we can get really. Um, and then from there, I mean, by Christmas we'll be applying for jobs. Yeah, we gotta get, hopefully, get something locked down by May. Graduation is looming ever quicker every day, and it's a little scary to think about, but you know, it's, I don't know, it's fun at the same time as it is scary. You just kind of have to put yourself out there, and obviously I'm like, I feel like I've gotten more comfortable with doing stuff like this and like translating it into my like sports. Um, videos and I think this is like another fun way to really get myself out there and like kind of share my stuff and get my friends out there get them some publicity on here too <laughs> and I don't know it's just another fun way to do things and keep yourself active because obviously sports aren't going on so I can't be doing those videos but I can do stuff like this and I can still post about them on my social medias and I'm hoping to do a video with them soon so that'll be exciting when I can get that going and I don't know it's good to see them practicing at least but obviously it's tough not seeing like games and stuff but you just kind of have to see what jobs are out there and see where you can get your foot in the door obviously you're not going to end up with like a big name team right away that's just not super realistic but you just gotta kind of start small and work your way up and see who's looking for people and who's willing to take you on and do what they can with you but we're ambitious i mean you say you say big name team and we're still gonna apply oh yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, in this process, you know, you have your resume lined up, you have your really detailed reel uh, yeah. broken up into segments, oh, here are my interviews, here are my post-game intermission, whatever recaps, um, you put those in and you put your name out there and you, you really just shoot for the stars, there's no limit for you. Um, I know I, since I'm in hockey, I'm really going to try to that's in you know NBC Sports Boston, all the Boston market, um, then up in Toronto, uh, Vancouver, Sportsnet, TSN, um, maybe even like the new franchise out in Seattle. Um, yeah, just really, you know, your dreams are gonna become reality one day if you work hard enough. So yeah. that's what we're gonna do. And it's nice because like, yeah, hockey would be great. I love hockey. That's like obviously my favorite thing. But I work for soccer too, and I have definitely a love for that sport as well so it's like I can see myself going in England or going to yeah that'd be I mean I England. do have my passport now so I could go across the pond if I really wanted to so um cute. get some maybe MLS or USL over here or go maybe see if the Premier League wants an American over there who knows but yeah it'll be <laughs> it'll be interesting to see like where I end up what sport I end up with or what like TV network I possibly end up with so it'll be interesting to see where things go 
But for now, that's all for this vlog. Thank you to my girl Natalie for coming on. It was Thank a fun you time. So much. I'll put her information in the description below. Um, but yeah, that's all we got. Any final words for my viewers? No, um, so Lauren, keep kicking <laughs> and taking names. <laughs> final words, just really, if you work hard enough, you'll get what you want. And honestly, even if it seems like a reach, put your name out there anyway. Exactly. The worst they can do is say no, but at least they have your information. Maybe they'll pass it along to somebody else that could use someone like yourself. You never know what can happen from it, so might as well take that chance. Be bold. Have fun. Love what you do, and you'll never work a day in your life. Absolutely. And for now, stay safe. Bye-bye.